Hello guys and gals, this is going to be The Fables of Leonardo da Vinci, Part 7. No, I can move that out of the way. That was just to, um, let me know which video this was, just at a glance. Since they'd, they'd all look the same if I just started with, opened with the same panning shot of this book. Now, this is a book. It's really, really nice. I got it from the library. They were going to throw it away, probably. I doubt that. Well, it was put out for free, so, um... They were making room, and no one had checked it out in a long time. But anyways, as always, this is these fables were interpreted and transcribed by Bruno Nardini, and the introduction by Margaret Meeks, which we probably will read, but not in this episode. And all the illustrations are by Adriana Savizi Maza, and I'm sorry if I butchered that name. Looks like this was first published in 1973. Now, um... We're going to start with the cranes, because the last story that we read in the last video was the mouse, a mouse, a weasel, and a cat, which is basically the story that the back cover and the front cover are based upon. Now, we'll be reading the cranes, and this is from legend, from the legend, Fidelta over Lilauta. Humboldt code 9R. Now, if we go to the back, we can we can interpret this. Uh, I believe H is Humboldt code. Right here. H is Humboldt code located in the Institut de France, Paris, France. Uh, and R is the facing page. So, page 9 facing. In this book, um, the Delta over the Delta, or whatever. I'm terrible with pronunciations. I'm not very good with other languages. Sorry about that. But, okay, we will read about the Cranes. The king was a good king, but he had many enemies. The Cranes, loyal and faithful, were anxious for him. It was always possible, especially at night, that enemies might surround the palace and take the king prisoner. What shall we do, they wondered. The soldiers, who ought to be on guard, are sleeping. No more tasks can be laid on the dogs, for they are always hunting and always tired. It is for us to guard the palace and let our king sleep peacefully. So the cranes decided to become sentinels. They divided themselves into groups, and each had his own his own beat. So kind of like a cop, you know, a beat cop, you know, the ones that would walk around. So they divided themselves into the group and had their own beat, with regular changes of the guard. The largest group strung itself out in the meadow. That's good. Surrounding the palace. Another group stood outside all the doors. And a third decided to stay in the king's bedroom so as to watch him all the time. I'm trying to think if they would actually let cranes in to the king's bedroom. Oh, well. It's a story. That's fine. Um... Okay, and a third decided to stay in the king's bedroom so as to watch him all the time. Okay. And suppose we are overcome by sleep, some of them asked. We have a safeguard against falling asleep, re replied the oldest crane. We shall all grasp a stone in the claw, which, which is raised when we are standing. Still, if one of us goes to sleep, the stone will fall to the ground and the noise will wake him. Every night since then, the cranes have been guarding the palace, changing every two hours, and not one of them has dropped his stone. And that is actually pretty brilliant. It, it basically gives, um... What's it called? Um... It gives, um, credence. Uh, it, it, it makes them more vigilant if they're to not... to, to stay awake. Yeah... I like that story. That was actually a really good one. Now, um, I have read this one. This one is The Elephant. And um, I'm going to say that Leonardo da Vinci was a brilliant man, but his information on animals really wasn't all that, well, correct, I guess, because they didn't have like the Discovery Channel or anything like that like we do today or access to... The knowledge that we have. So that some of this stuff isn't exactly true by today's standards. But it's still really, really um, interesting. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, this is from the Legend 
Leo Fonte, Humboldt Code, 19, reverse page. No, that's an R. That's the facing page. And 20 on the reverse page. Okay, on the reverse side. Okay, now we're going to take a picture. We're going to focus on this elephant while I read this. This is the elephant. The, the great elephant has by nature qualities which are very rare among men. Honesty, prudence, and justice. Elephants are religious and show it every time the new moon appears. As a ceremonial greeting, they will go down to the river and wash for a long time. When they are ill, they lie down on the ground and gather flowers and herbs with their trunks, flinging them up into the sky as though they were making an offering to the gods. When the old elephants lose their tusks, they bury them. Usually elephants use one tusk for digging up roots for food and keep the other for fighting. When they are surrounded by hunters they realize and realize that they are too tired to resist any longer, they strike their trunks against the trees until they break, break off. They know that men will kill them only for their tusks, and by doing this they save their lives. They are merciful with their victims and recognize every danger in advance. One day an elephant found a man alone and lost in the forest. He went up to the man, obviously inviting him to follow, and so helped him to find his way. Another day he saw only footprints, so fearing an ambush he halted, panting, and showed the marks to his companions. They advanced all together, one pressed against the other very cautiously. They usually live in herds, with the eldest always walking up at the head and the, the next eldest at the end. They are very modest and couple only at night and in secret. Afterwards, they return to the herd after washing themselves in the river. They never fight for their mates, as many other animals do, and they are kind to the weakest. If they meet a flock or herd of other animals, they make a way through with their trunks so as to disturb no one, and they do not react unless provoked. An elephant once fell into a pit, all the elephants in the herd begin to throw branches and stones into the hole to raise the bottom and help the captive elephant to climb out. When they hear pigs squealing, they are afraid and retreat in disorder, injuring more of their own comrades than that of the enemy. They love rivers. They wander, wander continually around them, but because they are so heavy, they cannot, they cannot swim. They eat stones, but their favorite food is the trunks of trees. They hate mice, flies, and, on the other hand, are attracted by their smell. But when an elephant feels the flies on them, they wrinkle their skin and kill them all. If they have to cross a river, they send the babies further downstream, while the adults remain upstream, making a dam with their great bodies to break the current and prevent the water from carrying their children away. The dragon is the enemy of the elephant, he attacks by sliding under the elephant's belly. He binds the elephant's feet with his tail. With his wings and spikes, he grips the elephant round the body. But when the elephant falls, he crushes the dragon, and so dying, he revenges himself on his killer. Okay. There's a lot we can say about that. Um, but I won't. Because this is really kind of an interesting... I know this is meant to be a fable, so... You can't really take the dragon part seriously. Um, but um, it's still... Back then they had a really interesting notion of animals. I will say that. So this was a very good story. We will read two more of these, and then um, I'll probably call it a video. Um, we will read The Chestnut and the Fig Tree. And... Uh, we're going to, have to take a look at that lizard. One day, an old chestnut... Oh, wait a minute. We're going to... Okay. This is called The Chestnut and the Fig Tree, and it is from the fable ATL 67RA. So, I'm going to look at these codes real quick. Here we go. I don't see an A here. But I do see... Wait, what was that? Sorry. Uh, Atlantic. Atlantic code located in Biblioteca Ambrosiana, Milan, Italy. Okay. Page 67. 
facing page. Okay. Now, that that's out of the way, let's read this. We're going to take a look at that lizard, because it's a cool lizard. One day, an old chestnut tree saw a man up a fig tree. The man was bending the branches towards himself, pulling off the ripe figs. He put, the, put them one by one into his mouth and broke them up with his strong teeth. And the chestnut tree's murmuring branches said, O oh, fig tree, how much less you owe to Mother Nature than I. Do you see what she has done for me? How well she has arranged and protected my dear children, dressing them first in a robe of fine material, over which she put a coat of hard skin, softly lined, and not satisfied with having done me this kindness, she has built for each of them a strong little house, and furnished it with sharp, thick spines to protect it from the hands of men. When the fig tree, with all its figs, heard this, it began to laugh, and after laughing for a time, it said, But do you really know, man? Whatever you do... Oh, whatever you do... Oh. Whatever you do, he will go to great trouble to take all the fruit from you. Armed with rods, sticks, and stones, he will strike your branches and make your fruit shower down. And once they have fallen, he will stamp on them or crush them with stones to force them out of their little houses, so well protected with spines, and your children will come out battered, broken, and maimed. But my fruit is gathered delicately, and I am touched only by hands. Which is really interesting. And puts things into perspective. Last one we're going to read is called The Tree and the Pole. And it's from Fable F O the Third 47, maybe that's chapter 3. F-O, I'm going to look up this um, abbreviation real quick, and then we will, uh... oh, F-O is the Foster Code, located in the Institut de France, Paris. Foster's Code, okay. On page 37, on the reverse side. Okay. So, this is called The Tree and the Pole, and this one is really, really short. Then um, we'll read the ibis bin chicken in the next one. Okay, it says, A tree which grew luxuriantly, lifted to heaven its plume of tender leaves, objected to the presence... Oh. I misread that. I'm sorry. I'll try again. This is the tree and the pole. A tree which grew lux luxuriantly, lifted its lifted to heaven its plume of tender leaves, objected to the presence of a straight, dry old pole beside it. Pole, you are too close to me. Can you move further away? The pole pretended not to hear and made no reply. Then the tree turned to the thorn hedge surrounding it. Hedge, can you not go somewhere else? You irritate me. The hedge pretended not to hear and made no reply. Beautiful tree, said the lizard, raising his wise little head to look up at the tree. Do you not see that the pole is holding you straight? Do you not realize that the hedge is protecting you from bad company? And that's that. That's all for that one. And that's true. Sometimes we take what we have for granted. With that, I'm going to end this video. Um, in the next video, we'll probably read three or four more of these. Uh, looks like we have the ibis coming up. The flames the razor, and then maybe we'll read the lion too. But yeah, this has been the fables of Leonardo da Vinci, and there are a total of 73 of these. And so we are not even probably halfway done with this series, to be honest. But this has been really fun. Anyways, um, lost my train of thought there for a second. Part 8 will be coming out very soon. Um, this has been a really insightful book. Leonardo da Vinci was really an exceptional gentleman. Exceptionally gifted in being an inventor and in knowledge and that kind of stuff. And this has been a real treat. Anyways, if you like this content, make sure that you subscribe and that you like the video and that you um, ring the bell. I've got other content like this and even different content. I've got a very wide variety of content on my channel. So, if you like any of that, then um, 
feel free to check that out. I'm up to almost 300 videos by now, I think, on my channel. I'm not sure. I don't believe I can actually tell how many videos I have currently uploaded. But it's up around 300, I think. Anyways, with that being said, I appreciate all the support, and thanks again for watching, everyone, and have a great day.